Folks, I would like to introduce you, or reintroduce you, as most Notre Dame fans should know, this is Autry Denson, who uh, now has the distinction of being one of the few people on the face of this earth to experience Camp Culver as a player, <laughs> and now experience Camp Culver as a coach. I trust the accommodations for the coaches were a little bit better than what you had as a player back in the 90s. Absolutely. It was much more enjoyable the second time around. Uh, I just remember being there, uh, and you got to realize it was my freshman year as well. So with all the stuff that goes on with you, you being got a to freshman, go yeah. In addition to you know you being away from home and those adjustments, I mean you get the heat of Culver and the the barracks. So, oh, you uh, were that, a freshman yeah. sophomore. Yeah. You didn't get to go sleep in the yeah. ice rink, did at, you? At all, at all, at all. I, it was funny. We were talking about that, and I just found out to just show you how locked in you know at the time you didn't I know was. That the, I didn't even know there was an ice rink. We didn't even know that. So they're out getting cool. Absolutely. And they're letting you guys sweat. Yeah, yeah, they did not tell us at all. So where'd you stay this time? You stay in the house? Yeah, it was a lot better. A lot better. Yeah, a lot better. Because I've been told that the, the, they're barracks. Yeah, they are. I, I was told they hadn't changed much since they when are. you guys were down there. They are. Now what they did a but good they job bring of, your fans. they brought the fans this time. Mm -hmm. Last time we were just, I mean, we were toughing it out. No, no forewarning, nothing. It was windows and uh, pretty much hoping for a breeze. Notre Dame's all-time leading rusher. NFL pedigree. How does that help you do your job now when you're talking to this generation of Notre Dame running backs? I think, first of all, it gives you a level of credibility. Uh, we do live in the technology age, so I said it helps that guys can YouTube you because they want to know if, if what you're saying you've done, and it gives you that level of credibility. Now, once you have that credibility, what it allows me to do is just have a more captive audience with the message that I'm trying to get out to them. So they give you the credibility, and it's up to me to keep it by making sure I'm instructing and modeling what I want those guys to do for me. Of course, uh, lifeblood of college coaching is, in fact, recruiting. There are just certain areas of the country that seem to produce more outstanding mm -hmm. college football players than others. Florida is one yeah, of them. Florida. You're from South Florida. All but one year of your coaching mm -hmm. career in Florida. You have great Florida ties. How important will that be for your ability to do your job? It's very important because uh, being from Florida, we always would joke around and say that it takes a Florida guy to recruit a Florida guy. You know, that is very much true because uh, there is so much competition, uh, you know, not talking about anywhere else or talking down. But when you go to the state of Florida, you're recruiting against every program in the country because everybody's going to make a stop down there, two or three during the recruiting cycle. So in order for you to make the headway you need to, you have to have relationships already in place or it'll just take too long. Now, it's not easy here, and I know uh, Brian Kelly prides himself on saying nobody is surprised. You know, mm -hmm. Coach Bray in basketball does the yeah. same thing. We're very upfront about the fact you're going to have to work here, and you know, I talked to Mike Golick Jr. about that, and, and it's not that people are smarter. It's that this university challenges you, mm -hmm. but if you do the work, then you get the degree, and I've always noticed you go on to be successful. You're successful both as a coach, but also in some of your outreach endeavors to mm -hmm. the community and whatnot. And that's what I see. Notre Dame students, all of them, yes, but sir. football players included, make a difference in the communities where they live 20, 30, 40 years down the road. You can get that message across. How receptive are today's young players to that message? I think uh, if you, you get the right young man, because it isn't for everybody. I think it makes my job a lot easier because of what we're preaching and the things that we're about, you either have to be all in or all out. There's no way, as you say, it is challenges. There are obstacles. There are things that if you look at it as obstacles, you won't embrace it. If you look at them as opportunities, which Notre Dame student athletes will, that is the type of young man we need. And you have to understand that it's not just football. It's not just academics. It's social, it's academics, and it's athletics. So the three together are a heck of a combination, but you have to be sold and bought in on all three in order to be the young man we want here. So you can go on to experience that success. Let's talk about your running backs. And let's talk about a guy, and I've said this over and over, I'm becoming a broken record, but I mean this. We're not talking a lot about Tari and Folston. Mm -hmm. And we should be talking about Tari and Folston. Had an outstanding year last mm -hmm. year. He's consistent, he does his job, and he's getting better and better. Yeah, I think that is a compliment when you think about it because it, he has come to the point to we just expect Tari and to do certain things. So he's produced to the point to where the expectations are up there. So you're not awed by what he does because you're used to it. So that I take it as a compliment. CJ Procise obviously has created a lot of excitement uh, with the things that mm -hmm. he can do. He's out a little bit now with a hip flexor. Mm -hmm. He'll be back. But give me your thoughts when you first started getting to work with number 20. Man, he can get over with in a hurry. 
I mean, he can end it in a, in, in a flash. I mean, CJ brings, you look at his height, his weight, his size, I mean, his, his ability to uh, finish plays in a hurry and uh, his pass catching ability because he did come from playing wide receiver. So he is the total package, just having to make those necessary adjustments to his move to running back from receiver. And another receiver has made that move, a young man who has yeah. untapped potential to this point in number 11, Justin Brent. How is he making the adjustment? He's doing well. He's doing very well. Uh, he is uh, physically just a specimen. So, I mean, you see Justin, and I mean, he's a big guy. Uh, he can run. He, too, is going through that adjustment from, uh, you know, playing out in space to, you know, it's a little bit more condensed back there in the backfield. And uh, he's doing a good job. You have two talented freshmen who right now are both mm -hmm. battling for playing time, and both of whom at times have looked very good. Yeah, they are both very explosive, bring a lot to the table. I would think as a unit, our biggest attribute is the uh, diversity that we have in the room in regards to our abilities. We have so many guys that bring so many different things to the table, you know, whether it be speed, power, intelligence, football IQ. I think as a unit, we have a great mix of that. How has the position changed? since when you played it, oh, about 20 years ago. Oh, man, it has. Uh, you really, uh, running back by committee, we used to say that at Notre Dame, and that was the case. But if you looked around the country, a lot of programs, you had one main guy, as it was when I was here, that, you know, got the bulk load of carries. Nowadays, it's a little different from the standpoint of, I mean, these guys are so much bigger, faster, stronger. Schemes have changed so much that you got to have, you know, two or three guys that can go, definitely two, possibly three, and it's for them as well. I mean, you want to give them enough opportunity. They get enough opportunity where they can show what they can do, but you also don't want to bang them up so much that if they get the opportunity to play at the next level, that they left their best carries in college. And when you were playing, you weren't always the only guy behind the quarterback. There was another guy. He was called, uh, oh, yeah, the fullback. <laughs> they used to have absolutely, a fullback. Absolutely. You don't have a fullback yeah. anymore. Yeah, that is the forgotten man in football. And how does yeah. that change it from, because sometimes that fullback, uh, I mean, I think you and Mark Edwards, yes, if I remember, I had Mark overlap, Edwards, certainly, yep. and Mark was very productive. Absolutely. I mean, he got the ball. Sometimes yeah, he turned he into the guy, he but did. other times you'd get the ball and he'd be running in front of you. Mm -hmm. How has that changed it for, for a running back today? It, does it change any of your techniques? Because you don't often have that lead blocker mm -hmm. anymore. A hole opens, you yeah. have to get through it, and then it's you. Yeah, it, it's changed, and, and I think the adjustment is it more the spread. You're not just more, you know, north and south, downhill running. You do have the east and west, a little bit more lateral movement, so that's how you kind of make up for it. But uh, it, it, football is football at the end of the day. So, I mean, if we were running downhill more, you would probably miss that fullback more, but that's kind of why the fullback has been replaced because – you, you do just as much lateral as you do going, you know, vertical with the game now. Is it more important in the spread for the running back to be able to catch the football? Absolutely. Absolutely. How do you teach that? Just making sure that uh, they're, one, comfortable. You have to be comfortable with uh, what you've been asked to do. Uh, it helps with recruiting, trying to recruit young men that fit what you want them to do in the uh, responsibility of the position. You get him here in development is just making sure that you put him in as many situations as possible, not just repping, you know, running back, you know, specific things, but things that are specific to the pass game, running routes, and making sure that they're just so comfortable catching the football that it becomes like second nature. It becomes like running the football. Now, uh, last week, right down there behind us, mm -hmm. uh, Coach Kelly had a young man by Absolutely. the name of Josh Anderson model the Shamrock yes. Series uniform. Uh, and while praising all that he had mm -hmm. done, he's never taken a carry in the game, although he was the scout team running back of the year last year for Notre Dame, gave him a scholarship. Very emotional moment. Mm -hmm. His teammates went nuts. What was going through your mind? Because you now know the value of yeah. a Notre Dame education in terms of what it will do for yeah. the rest of your life. And also, you know very well the check yeah, that his folks absolutely. were writing absolutely. each year. Absolutely. What went through your head at, during that moment? I was so excited for him because everything Coach Kelly said, I mean, words can't describe the young man that Josh is, both on and off the field. Uh, to have gotten a chance to speak to his parents during the spring game and just really get to, I mean, that once you talk to them, you know exactly why Josh is Josh. So just appreciation. I am a parent now myself, and as we talked about the amount of just the appreciation for what that check they've been writing, for them to be able to exhale and also see that they're hard work and they walked out on faith and they put him here and he's been here for three years and you know, for them to get rewarded, that's uh, very fulfilling and very, very exciting for me, for them. So I was happy for them. Great to have you back. No problem.